The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, uh, Tiger Technician's Hour, noon till 1, 1 p.m., and my pleasure to be here. Thank you, Tommy Jr., for a great update on the hour. We get great updates here at TFNN, and we're looking at the Dow up 37 at 21,880. S&P is up 5 at 2443. The E-mini is up 375. Look at that move. We'll talk about that in a moment. But in the meantime, this is Friday, and that means that we've got a really strong down leg, but it's still leg F. It does not make a peak until there's a lower high bar, and that means that looking at the uh, E-mini, you get if there is no high above the 2488.50 high of the 8th of uh, August, that's going to suggest quite strongly that you, we have, in fact, made a top um, – in the weekly chart, but it doesn't say anything yet about because price is the arbiter of the trend, even though the weekly technicals, this is the daily on the left, in the middle is the weekly. Here's the 120-minute chart. Look at the bounce from the 2430.25 level. MACD ran up nicely. Stochastic, quite good, but at 23%, it should be much higher. This is a single leg, A to the upside. So this is what we're looking at. If you jump from that 120-minute chart to the weekly chart, what we're looking at is this is on the way up, holding the nine-period moving average right up until yesterday. The 120-minute chart is in a balance. It hasn't even taken out that ugly candle of, ye of yesterday at even at 4 o'clock. There was some kind of, if you're looking at this 4 o'clock candle, after that, there was a pullback, and that pullback uh, went to the low of the session, and then it went, meandered around until this morning, dip, dipped slightly to 2430.75. What's really in informative about this whole aspect is that within the context of markets, I, I love to look at it this way. Have a, have a look at the different charts. Here's the... Daily chart of the E-mini, this is the S&P E-mini, now at $4.50. It made that oval formation. I, I, I don't want to spend too much time with this now. Than to say there's a Chapman wave oval with the leg, the body, the neck, the head, and the, the beak. We're in the beak phase right now. But what's really important about it, you remember the nine-period moving average? It was walking the nine-period moving average. Well, all of a sudden, the nine-period moving average of 2460 is resistance way up there. So that's going to speak to a lot of issues. Now let's go through the, the, the weekly chart. We're looking at a weekly chart that says, hey, nice move to the upside in price. But wait a minute. The MACD is deflected lower. The stochastic is good at 91%, but it is starting to move lower. And this, this red one right here is the RSI, and the blue one is the, that's the relative strength index. The blue one is the unbalanced volume. And both of those have been dipping down. So... I'm going to go through the different phases. I'm going to move from the 120-minute chart, which just says little basing area here, but until we're really breaking the 2455 area, this is just a bounce of, of uh, a really heavily sold um, low of yesterday. Uh, now I want, to, I want to do this. I'm going to move to the Dow for a moment, and I want to show you something. The Dow is up 43, having made a high of 22,179 on the 8th. It broke under the nine period moving average. I'm putting a down arrow, although it's just a little premature. I should wait for the close today. But everything about us is MACD cross negative, stochastics at 74%. That's negative. Unbalanced volume daily is negative. Now, what's really interesting about this is that you've taken out in really just two sessions because you've got to count the, the eighth as a session up because the candle made a high. So it's really two sessions. We took out one, two, three, four, five, six, about six to, or seven sessions to the left. So that's the speed that we've got. And within that context, you've got a leg D in the daily, probably going to be a, week, a, a, a weekly peak D if there's no 22,180 next week to break into a new high. And this is the 120-minute chart made a beautiful peak E, top. Let's get out of that and go to the monthly. And that's really what I want to show you. Within the context of 
patterns. This is decidedly a bullish one, a daily with a little bit of a reversal here, and we'll see because if it breaks under 21,700 by Wednesday week, that's going to be very negative. If it just chops around here um, and even goes higher into the 22,050 uh, area, that's going to be very positive. Weekly chart, major market, uh, a major bull phase, still intact. But it is a leg D. We've got to be somewhat careful. MACD, moving average convergence, divergence, is good but not great. Now, stochastic is very good at 95%. I am trying to put this together with a package because I have my second webinar of the two webinar series. There's still time. You can, If you're interested, you'll be able to pick up the Wednesday, this August, the second webinar. I went through all these different things. I said we're looking for a, some kind of a, a, a top being formed, and that top will suggest what's going to happen over the period going into uh, late August, September, and then we'll get a real sense of whether there's any chance that there, there could be a rotational sector correction that holds the market up very well going to 2018. So on Wednesday is the second one. So you could still review the first one. It was not time specific in that you had to get it today. No, this is looking at the big picture and looking at different, um, different sectors and what we were looking at, why I said that the uh, semiconductor sector was really overbought. Um, and that was leading the market on big way up into the June high, then the July low, and then the July counter trend rally. SMH has failed to make a new high. And that was a clue that we could be coming down at least in the short to maybe intermediate term. But look at the weekly chart. Beautiful action. If you just half close your eyes, everything's beautiful. The, the nine period moving average of 21,642, that's the key. And the weekly chart is looking really good. I'm sorry, the monthly chart still in leg E, but E is where we've got to be a little careful. And the stochastic is very good at 96%. The MACD is good. It's just the on balance volume that's suggesting maybe it's getting a little toppy here. So all three at this particular point, all three charts are looking good but on a purely technical basis the uh, daily has gone to a sell signal and i'm pretty sure i'm going to be I, i've got a down arrow already I, i'm pretty sure we're going to call it a sell mode and that's just a description it doesn't say oh sell mode is going all the way down to 2100 it just says no 21,000. that is um, it just means right now that's exactly the delineation between the levels we're looking at so the s p sbx.x is now up about six, yep, up 627. Made a peak E in the Chapman wave on the 8th. That's a very, this is in a sell mode. The weekly has no signal yet, but if there is a close on Friday, this coming Friday, a week from today, below 2440, I suspect I'll be giving that a sell signal. Let's watch that one very closely. Strong resistance at 2462. The 2436 support better holds, otherwise it's going much lower. And this is still leg D in the weekly chart. Let's go over to the QQQ series. Look at the Qs. Um, also, this is a peak C1, C2. We've often seen them go to a D, but in this particular instance, I'm calling the 143.90 top. Um, is that, yeah, uh, below the 145.96, the high of the 27th of July, some kind of a double top formation. We've done almost a one to one to the downside. It's the weekly chart that we're watching very closely. Monthly chart is still very strong. Although there's a chance we might be making a peak C, I'll go to gold, but I'll spend a little time on the VIX index when we get back. So Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, Dow's up 41, S&P's up 6, and a counter trend bounce. We'll be right back. We want to look at oil. We want to look at a lot of things, as well as PKS, CHL. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. EverBank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender.
Basil Chapman will be giving a two-series webinar Wednesday, August 2nd and Wednesday, August 16th from 5 to 6.30 p.m. Can sector rotation buoy the market into 2018? Each time the market feels it's ready to have a sharp decline, formerly weak sectors rally to hold the market up. This two-webinar series will be free for Basil's opening call subscribers. And non-subscribers will also receive his daily newsletter for one month free as a trial subscription. Sign up for a 30-day free trial to Basil's daily newsletter, The Opening Call, and gain access to his subscriber-only webinar on August 2nd and Wednesday, August 16th from 5 to 6.30 p.m. Can sector rotation buoy the market into 2018? Hi everyone, this is Basil Chapman and I'm looking forward to seeing you at my webinar series. To sign up for a 30-day free trial to Basil's daily newsletter and gain access to Basil's webinar, visit the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. We're back. So we're looking at the, uh, the QQQ series up 97 cents at 142. What's really important about this is that there's a gap between 140.86 and the 137s going back to mid-July. And I suspect that that's going to be the big test. It close below 137 over the next, uh, I wouldn't say two weeks. I don't even want to go that far to three weeks, but two weeks. And we will be looking at the uh, weekly chart starting to say, uh oh, if there is a close below the low of um, the week of the 7th of July, 135.80 was that low. We've started a move to the downside that says the next gap is going to be filled, and that gap is at 136.34 to 130.72. So we go gap by gap. Why? Let me show you why. Because you see this chart here on the right? This is my what I show my subscribers to my open call. So if you, if you sign up for my webinar, this is a two-webinar series. The first one, you can got archived. You'll be able to look at it as many times as you want. There's no, there's no time sequence. It's the, it's the first one first and the second one second. The first one was an introduction to what we're looking at, why we're looking at, and chart formations that were very important, sectors that were very important, and, 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 a, and a good look at the Dow, the very long-term aspect, and trend lines, etc. So you, you'll review that, and then we've had uh, calls. You can review the calls. In fact, all week you can you can go through those. They're archived. The other thing is that you will be getting the next webinar, which, I mean, is this not perfect timing? Uh, I spoke about this originally. I wanted to call the series uh, Skyscrapers, uh, Silicone, and Sneakers. No, Silicone, Skyscrapers, and Sneakers. Um, and the reason being that this ongoing theme that I spoke about yesterday, uh, you know, New York, six blocks, they're going to change because of air rights and get the <laughs> New York's going to get huge, they hope to get a huge amount of revenue from that. That's the only reason why these things change. Um, so that is an ongoing theme of mine, skyscrapers. It's been for decades and it will still remain for decades. And I don't see any reason why a skyscraper like the uh, Twin Towers, like the... Um, uh, like Petronas Towers, like uh, the Burj, um, the Burj Khalifa, the um, Empire State Building, 
All of those are major tops, and I don't see any reason why we aren't going to be doing the same thing here in the United States in the in the in I don't know if it's the near future, but in the future, it could be uh, two years, one year, we don't know. But it's accelerating now. The whole real estate deal is accelerating. So um, within that context, it was very important. Silicon, because the whole semiconductor index, I think, is just it, it's it's gone to an extreme, just in terms of um, focus how it became the IBB, the, the uh, biotech sector favorite this time around. Uh, biotechs kind of are out of favor. They fluctuate. But it's the semiconductors that were just winners. Every time you bought the SMHs, you were a winner. Now I think there's going to be a change. So that's the, and the other thing is that uh, if you look at uh, sneakers, it's all to do with about design. It's to do about how some of the companies, Nike, um, uh, uh, Crocs, uh, we, we, I wanted to look at them. But instead, I decided to make it the sector rotation. I think it's much more important to get the really big picture here in a very specific way. And that's what we're looking at. We have one stock that we've been using as a focus in terms of the Chapman Wave. That's what we always do during the uh, my webinar series. Um, and, and this one so far has held really nicely. Uh, we'll see if it can continue to do so. It's been up while the market's down, and that's really what the focus was. So there are a lot of things going on. And then you also have my newsletter as a subscription, a free a trial subscription for 30 days. So I just want to mention that Wednesday, August the 16th at 5 o'clock Eastern time will be the second one, 90 minutes. So it's two 90-minute webinars. You get my newsletter with education every single day. Plus, and every day, what does that mean? It means that every day I show um, something like this. Well, not something I show every day. The overview section, what we're looking at, there's the 120-minute chart. Here's the VIX 120-minute chart. Here's the trend. The trend didn't even know that there was a decline in the market. It's just been steady in the one-ish area. Hmm. What, what what market decline it's saying? And that, that's that's something that I'm going to spend a lot of time over the weekend studying because I have some theories about this. The few times that has happened where it's ignored the market, it's told me a whole bunch of things that are, that's going on internally. And that's what we're going to be discussing. Yes, the bar charts of the Dow daily and the S&P daily. And then I discuss exactly what we're looking for. Uh, um, the Dow plus 30s with the others up at 11, 10 minutes past 11, uh, could see an arch intraday trade where uh, it, it rallies and then it comes back a little bit just because of nervousness of, over the weekend. I show the Dow charts in great detail every single day. Here's, the, uh, here's my whole analysis of the day. The 120-minute chart made a chapter wave five on the way down. Uh, it's a leg D on the way down. And here it is with the MACD and stochastic. MACD looks terrible. Stochastic's making a soft W formation, so it could rally. This was today's call from yesterday's close. And you can see that we got that bounce today. Uh, here's the, uh, the Dow Daily. I discuss it in great detail. So it's a very comprehensive look at the markets. I show all the different charts that we're involved in. Um, what is this one? Yeah, this is one of those that we have long. Uh, so that. It's a very comprehensive, and I think it's a bargain. <laughs> Just to be a little modest about that, I do. I think, in terms of the information that you get and you can use. So now let's go back to our nitty gritties. What we're looking at is that gap. The first gap I said today, we, we covered two gaps yesterday with that big plunge to the downside. Didn't quite fill it, the second gap. That will be filled at some point. And how do we get to that third one, under 21,700? Do we even get to the fourth one on the downside, way down in the 21,400s? I talk about that. Every day we discuss things that are very important to the market. Now let's get back to the nitty gritties. So I wanted to show you that gold, gold that is a very strong move up. I'd shown this to subscribers, although we didn't have a gold trade in this particular move. I showed this in the, for, for subscribers saying there's a left side, right side price time match. I, I discussed this yesterday, in fact. And I said we, we, one bar, we were two bars yesterday above the, the first one that went to the candle of the 9th of June at 1290.80. We had just snuck above it. And today we're way above it, but underneath the major one that's really the issue from the 6th of June at 13.05, We've got a left side, right side price time match going to today. And where did we go to? We went all the way to 12.98. Not bad huh, for this particular technique. V-shaped pattern, holding by the 9 p moving average. I think gold's getting a little tired. But you see, you've got the stuff going on uh, with North Korea. 
And that means I have to have a look right now at the VIX index. And if I, it had more to do with courage than anything else, because my analysis said that the VIX index should be making a top in emotion today. And that we might find that a lot of what's going on is ameliorated over the next few days. And then we go into Wednesday, maybe there isn't that big spike where the VIX actually goes into the 20s. But instead, things just soften and quieten down. But we know that North Korea now is an issue. I'd never had this ever in my uh, notation of the big spikes. Look at this monthly chart. The bank crisis back in uh, October of 2008. Uh, Greece, Greek crisis. You remember Greek, Greek, Greek? Who even thinks about Greece mm -hmm. other than going on a on a, on a on an island uh, cruise? Um, 48 at on the 11th of uh, August. So that was oh that was 11 2000 August of 2011. It spikes to 48. So it goes from 89.53 October 2008 to 48. August of 2011 to the Eurobank stress test crisis uh, in July, uh, where it was back in um, October of 2014, and then the China and interest rates, 53.23 back in August of 2015. And then Trump told me, you know, it's a career. I'll be back. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan. Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So the 200 period moving average in this 10-minute E-mini chart, you see the resistance there? It wasn't resistance um, until it broke down. It was support for a little while. It was resistance and it wasn't resistance. And then when it broke down back on the uh, 9th of um, August at uh, 22.30, 22.30 is 10.30, uh, um, 
it, it just became strong resistance, and then you didn't even think about it because we went so far away from that green line as the S&P mini went down towards the lows that were made in the 2430s. And now look, all of a sudden, it becomes a magnet. But at this particular point, I think that magnet is going to have a tough time because we're getting into the afternoon period. And I'm not sure how many people want to actually take on new positions going into the weekend when anything can happen. I, I personally don't think anything's going to happen. But a lot of bluster and fluster. We'll see. I mean, I'm hoping, right? Uh, but, so there's this doji candle in the IYR. Question about it coming in about the IYR, which is the U.S. REITs. This is the um, uh, commercial REITs ETF. And look at this, a pullback from that doji candle at E makes an arch formation, hits the 200 period moving average. So this is going to be very important. Why? Because the up channel in the weekly um, has support around about 78.40. If it takes that out, expect to hit the low of the week of the 14th of July at 77.52. So I've got a couple of really good questions all lined up. Let me just finish this quickly. I want you to say that, so the REITs, at one point, we thought would be some kind of a savior. We're going to look at it. Uh, I didn't talk about it other than say it's something to look at. They were holding well. And the only reason I say that is because they were giving a dividend. So that's really important. But so far, the dividend, dividend doesn't count because it's not acting very well. So yeah, and the quest, next question was, what about the IYT? The IYT is the, the iShares Transportation uh, Average ETF. A peak D so far in the week. A leg D could be a peak D in the monthly. If it doesn't go above 176, what was that, 175.75? And so far, it's at 166, up one and a quarter. It's trying to flush out some kind of a, an arch low and lowercase h low. We're going to watch this closely because if the transports really start to rally very strongly, that's going to be a positive. But in the meantime, Make sure the 163 support holes on the IYT. That's the way I'm looking at it. Uh, next question was USO. The USO oil is uh, down. It, it's down with the double top peak C1, C2, pulling back from the 200 period moving average. Uh, it's trading right now up two cents at 9.93. Couldn't break above 10. Point, what was it? 19. 10.32. The high of the 31st of July. And it's in a, looking like a peak B in the weekly, holding quite well. I, I do suspect that the pattern I'm looking at suggests that there could be a trading band between 950 and 1025 ish. And that's going to be very important over the next week or two. I'm not sure I'm looking at crude oil breaking down, but it's not acting very well. The question was, would you short? No, I, you know, I just don't see a short here. I also don't see a long other than maybe a pop-up of about 50, 60 cents. So I'm just saying I'm staying away from it. I want the evidence to be that it's either going to break decisively below $9.50, US $9 United States Oil Fund, or it's going to break above $10.33 to really get above. Um, no, no, I'm sorry, $10.43. I want it above the 10.35, 200 period moving average in the daily chart. So for me, I'm just... Nothing there. I, I, there might be, but I don't see it yet. Um, so the next question was, uh, I don't know. Uh, USO did that. Oh, the, the bank, the XLF. So the XLF today is down at 2473. It's made a peak F top at 2559. Uh, we have a buy in lower down. I'm, I said to my subscribers, I'm going to make a decision over the weekend. Whether I actually want to buy it right now because the yields, and we'll go to the TLT right this moment. No. Question was XLF and the KRE. So the XLF right now is in a sell mode in the daily chart. Sell mode is a description. Remember, that's a description. It doesn't say that it's going to go down from 24 down to 22. It just says if you hit a certain particular level, on the downside after making a particular peak and go under the nine period moving average and the MACD is weak and the stochastic is weak, you've gone to a sell signal. A sell mode says if you've closed under that nine period moving average a certain number of times or in a certain formation, you've gone to a sell mode. That's It's already deep enough to call it a sell mode. It doesn't tell you about going further down. What it does tell me is that the MACD and stochastic and the weekly chart have been very good, that if the the XLF, S&P Select Financials, break down below 24. I'm going to give it a little bit of room. 24, the low that was made right there. 
24.59, and they're at 24.74 right now. Closes below 24. I'm going to make it 24.50. I think that I've got to be prepared to see the XLF go deeper. The KRE had a much worse pattern. It didn't even break upside as the XLF did. It just kept going to lower lows and lower highs. I'm looking at this and I'm saying something's wrong. If the regional banks, S&P, Spider Fund, the, at 52.15, down 52 cents, if the KRE is acting this badly, I've I, I've changed my mind from saying I, I I like the banks for the next quarter, the next three months. That's including this month to say I've got to watch them really closely. And I'm going to include Goldman Sachs right here. Goldman Sachs um, made a peak C minus, is pulling back sharply. Yes, at 223, two, 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 if Goldman closes below 218 at any point in the next week and a half, I'm just going to suggest we've got to step back. Now, on the other side, if there is a VIX now, let me go back. This is what I wanted to do, and I'm going to do it right now. The VIX index is down almost at the low of the day in the 1480s. It hit 17.28 to go from even here, 1484 to the 1728 level. Normally, you would see this market um, spiking to the upside, probably 125 points, S&P up 25. So what's happening now is that the market is in disbelief that the VIX index is pulling back. It's saying, you know, maybe you're pulling back, but you're going higher. That's really what I think. My reading of what's going on uh, in terms of the buying pressure, but I'm making it real simple. If by the end of the day, the VIX closes under 14, 1482 is the nine period, 200 period exponential moving average um, where it is right now. It's right on it. It went much higher yesterday and today, but it actually is now underneath the 200 period moving average. If it closes towards the, the, the 14 area or lower, I wouldn't be surprised if there's no news over the weekend, Sunday night the futures are up and we have a nice rally on Monday. However, this is an unknown unknown, although we know historically that the uh, North Korean uh, uh, chief in charge um, has a way of preempting uh, many things, I had to, whether it's his brother-in-law, was it, or brother, stepbrother, I don't know what it is. But he, he has a way of initiating moves to kind of eliminate some kind of problem, potential problem in the future. So I would not rule out some nuttiness that he could come up with. I don't see anything um, yet. But he does have a habit of doing it, and therefore you have no choice but to be looking at this market and say, whoa, we've got peaks in the daily and perhaps in the weekly, and as a separate thing, we've got this North Korean. So you've got to be careful here. You've just got to be careful. I'll be back straight off. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, active trading information that 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. All right, so now let's get to the nitty gritties of some questions since it's Technical Friday. So the VIX Index, let me just make it clear. The aberration of going from $8.84 to over double, no, exactly double, exactly double, to 17.28 the high today in such a short period of time, in two weeks, uh, maybe it's a tad over two weeks, um, is, no, well, let's get the exact figure. It was the low of the 26th of July, so it was almost three weeks. That is incredible. And the Dow actually is really down. What is a big deal? So it's a 20, 21,900, and the all time high was 22,179. This is no big deal. You would expect that the Dow would be much deeper. So I'm looking at this, and, and there's an assessment that has to be made to say many of the sectors have had a severe blow and stocks in their daily charts. The weekly charts for many of them are just coming under pressure right now, but only under pressure, but coming off all time, almost all time highs in many cases. In many cases, they are all time highs. So I have to put this together for that webinar, for the second webinar, because this webinar is going to be looking at what is working, what is not working, what's under the radar. Uh, and that's really a, a big part of the picture. We actually have a, a financial, we have a, sorry, um, an order stock that is held extremely well above our entry point, but our entry point was very good. Not as gr good as I'd like it, but it was still very good. So it's held, it's gone much higher now, it's pulled back, but it's still above our entry price. I would love to keep it, but is this the time to be having order stocks? You know, these are the things that I want to talk about in the uh, in the webinar, and we'll focus on that. Um, okay, let's get back to now the question I had. So the VIX index, make it real clear. VIX index starts to go towards the low 14s of the market rallying, and there's no news over the weekend, just the same old stuff, but no real news. We could see a nice bounce, but I'm only treating it as a bounce right now because too many sectors needed to have a decent pullback, and that's what they've got. Now let's go to the question I had in hand, which was, would I look at, oh, no, no, where did it go? Um, will you look at CHL? Wasn't it CHL China? Um, yes, that's right. Here we go. CHL trading at this is trading at 56.86, up a dollar 78 in a day like this. Very nice, up 3.23 percent. Yesterday gapped up huge. What is it? It's China Mobile or Mobile, Mobile LTF weekly chart. Um, nice move, arch formation going for the lowercase m formation. Let's squeeze this so you can see it. Um, it's coming down from the H pattern that goes to a lowercase h, which if successful can go to a lowercase m. But there's something else that's going on. The MACD and stochastic are way stronger than it was earlier on. And this is suggesting it should go high. It's in leg C in the daily. It's in gray B in the weekly. A monthly chart is just a balance so far. So now let's look at the weekly chart. And I'm going to make a suggestion. You've got to know who's who's asking the question. In this case, this is a person who is uh, able to 
um, identify something and then sit with it because he has conviction that he's made the right choice, puts in a stop, but then just lets it run, doesn't get all fancy by going in and out. And in this particular instance, it went to a left side, right side price time match in a quicker time by two bars, by three bars, actually, because today is the day that it did it. And it broke above the high that was made back on the 25th of May at 5603. China Mobile, CHL, 56.86, up $1.78. Look at that. Gaps. Look at one gap, two gaps. This is the third gap. So my, what I said is two questions. Um, if this is something that you want to buy and hold, then obviously getting now at the higher, the most recent high of the months and months, it's, it's a little difficult. But I'm suggesting, because of the way you like to buy and trade, or position yourself rather than trade, I'm going to say you could nibble here, but my preference would be just to have a little patience, see if you can get it between 50, uh, 56 level, well, 5502 to 5447 of the 200-period simple and 200-period uh, moving averages, uh, the, uh, the exponential and the simple. What I'm really looking at is that if you wanted that's the area that would be the best risk reward because if it pulled back from 56.90 with a tiny little bit, you got to be prepared all the way to go to 54 something. That's two points is about five or six percent. But what I really would do is if you want to just nibble now to get a good feeling for the stock, saying you know what, it could go to a D and then after D it could come back much more. That's fine, but you're getting a good feel for the stock. So nibble here, but the real entry starting point is. Let this gap be filled at some point. It's the second gap. So between 55.10 and 54.30, that's where I really want you. Remind me again when it hits it. It will hit at some point. And just remind me, and then we'll look at it again. But that's where I think it has the greatest potential to climb above the high of the 24th of March, the week of the 24th of 58.83. So let's go one step at a time. So that's that question. Next question was um, Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank, if that's a question, I just mentioned Deutsche Bank making lower lows. You know, I'm I've been very nervous about Deutsche Bank because it it still has all that uh, diesel, the implications from the auto companies when they fake the diesel measurements, and. Uh, so I, I, I would just say if they still have something to do with the German auto companies, um, those companies are going to be hit for a lot of money. And it could be an unfolding thing. Maybe it's a one time, but it could actually they could keep it going by saying, oops, new evidence here, new evidence there. So all I'm saying is a Deutsche Bank trading at 16.86 down a penny. Um, yes, it could have a bounce at any point, but I think it's making lower lows and lower highs. I, I would avoid it. Um, so I'm not sure why it came up, and that's it. So the next question is the SPY trying to close above the, the moving average, the 50-day. Yeah, you know, uh, that's true. But I'm going, just going to say that the way the SPY is acted in the daily chart, unless there's a spectacular turnaround because every problem is alleviated next week and the VIX starts to go back to the 12s or 11s, I think that you've got to be somewhat careful. We're in a period now where you get instant bad news. The market is perceiving it as bad, and therefore you've got to be careful. So I'm just saying this very ugly candle, unless the spike can close in the 245.50s at any point next week, I think it's going to make lower lows and lower highs. And this leg D in the, in the weekly with the weak stochastic, weak MACD, stochastic still at 91% says there's quite a lot of room to pull back. But in fact, if it pulls back and the stochastic goes to, say, 76%, and then there's support, you might find that the S&P has not broken down below the 235 level, which is the, the low of the week of the 19th of March, of May, I'm sorry. Uh, so now, yeah, the, yeah, the other things. I was asked about if I could go through this again. I'm not sure I really want to take the time because I did it yesterday. It was archived and we did everything we needed. So just in terms of the stalk leg formation, the question came up. So you say that when the beak is completed, there could be a very strong rally. When will that happen? You don't know. You have to look at it as if it's um, just a technical analysis. And when you get a buy signal that goes to a buy mode, that's when you can have a really sharp rally. And then that rally just fizzles out soon after it starts. And then you're on your own. You have to get to a, a new 
um, technical analysis to find out. PWR power. Oh, that's a quanta. Quanta services. Oh, I used to have this notated. A made a peak. B in the monthly. It's having a leg. C probably a peak. C gray C in the in the weekly, and the uh, trading at thirty five fifty four down 14 cents so we've got one segment to go if i have a chance i'm going to do this analysis during the break and then we'll also when we come back i say what to look for on monday and tuesday of next week don't forget my webinar i'll be back straight after this hi i'm steve rhodes host of the trader's edge heard daily at tfnn.com and author of mastering probability a daily investment and trading newsletter service that i send out each morning by 8 a.m my morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Steve Steve Rhodes, as he teaches techniques on technical analysis using pattern recognition, celestial charting, Fibonacci, and other tools. The Trader's Edge, next on TFNN. Hi, everyone. Just finishing up this chart. Just did the daily, weekly, monthly in uh, uh, Chapman Wave notation. So this is very interesting. PWR, which is trading at 35.57, down 11 cents. This is Qantas Services Power. Um, I'm looking at this monthly chart. It's improved a lot. It had, a, it had made an all-time high at a B, peak B, and then it pulled back quite sharply. Now it's having a nice recovery. The weekly chart is saying, you know what, I'm trying to make that falling X formation, and I need a 30, um, 58.57. I don't want to break below 34 because a close below 34 changes the pattern. But if within a one week, no, let's make it a week and a day. I want Monday a week. If there is a move, a close above 37.35, it might make it an E, but it'll make it a D in the in the weekly and improve the technicals in the weekly and suggest that if it does that, that the whole 35 area could be very strong support and it could go higher. I'm just a little cautious right now. I need to see where it holds over the next two days. 
close below 35 says oops you're going quite a bit lower and a close about 36 30 says no no i'm fine i'm doing just great okay so now in the final few minutes let's do this i'm going to emphasize once again when i say let's go to the s p uh, 500 spx hit 2490.87 all-time high on the 8th pulls back in uh, three sessions in two sessions pulls back really sharply today so far as inside bar so a lot depends on what happens over the weekend. If there's just a kind of a lull and there's no news and the VIX starts to decline very quickly, uh, maybe even Friday night, uh, Sunday night going to Monday, mon Monday's opening, you could see another rebound day, but a, a stronger rebound day. But then I think you're getting into midweek. Uh, you want to know what's going on. This is one that's politically fraught with problems just because of, of the nature of uh, the whole North Korean situation. So technically... If there wasn't anything like that, I'd say, wow, a pullback like this from 2490 in the S&P to 2437 in such a quick, short space of time, you could have a bounce. But that bounce has to have the volatility index pulling back. If the VIX remains in the high 40, mid to high 14s, it says, be careful. You don't know what's going to happen on Sunday. So thanks for being here. And I'll see you back. Don't forget, go to the front page of TFN and check out my webinar. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today.